Hey guys, today we are going to talk about seven cards and why they went up. Do I see them as good long-term holds? And what will the future hold? And what other cards we should speculate on? So, first of all, the Commander deck has the Dragon, the five-color Dragon deck has been released. And we all know about it. Movement on Dragon cards have already happened. Including this one, Dragon Master Outcast. I bet you guys forgot about this mythic in Battle for Zen card. Before it was reprinted, this was a extremely, extremely pricey card. It's worth trading for at this time. And if you can accumulate a lot of them, might be worth a long-term hold. I don't expect this card to double or triple or quadruple in price. I mean, it would be nice if it did that, but as a long-term hold, a mythic one drop that can be played in a dragon deck will be very, very good. It right now is quite affordable, and that is something else I look at. When cards, when people buy the new five color EDH dragon deck, they will then look for cards, and this one fits in because it's one red, and it is a mythic. It's from a recent set. And at this particular point in time, very, very affordable. Great for casual players. Next, let's move on to the Adrazi Temple. There was a point in time that this was very, very cheap. As you can see, ar around September 15th, it looks like Battle for Zendikar. It was at a almost all-time low. It's like a dollar. It looks like it's like a dollar. So from a dollar, now it is $11. I don't see this price going down. Uh, one of the reasons it is not going down is Adrazi is a tier 2.5 modern deck. I would say it's a, almost a tier 1 deck in Legacy. Probably like a tier 2 deck in Legacy. Maybe a tier 1 deck in Legacy. And Vintage, it is one of the better decks in Vintage. Uh, there's not that many great decks in Vintage, but this is a playable, cheap deck in Vintage. One of the things that makes Aldrazi Temple so good is it's not banned. There you go. Should Aldrazi's be into the meta? And there was one time they called it the Aldrazi Winter where they were the most dominant deck. They were tier 1A. But since that time, I of Ugin has been banned and the deck has been weakened. However, still, I like this card. And I do believe it has a tremendous amount of potential, not to, just in Adrazi decks, but in the hybrid decks that I've been seeing with the Urza lands. And there's interesting hybrid decks, and I think we'll, we will see more of those. Now, in bulk, Triumph of the Hordes. Remember... The infect, the minus one, minus one effects, all of this is becoming more popular. Triumph of the Horde is a uncommon from New Phyrexia that does not involve Phyrexian mana. mana. That's worth some money. So if you have this card, it is time to pull it out from bulk because guess what? It's a free dollar card today. So what does it do? Two double green until end of turn. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain tr trample and infect. Foil copies. If you are lucky enough to have a foil copy of this, it is $12. EDH, thank you for this price. I like it. It's an overrun effect, but most importantly, it gives everyone infect and it kills your opponents and EDH. Because with everyone having infect and trample, and you know, plus one plus one does help. You are going to kill the opponent who very very fast. So I like the deck. I like the deck that this is being played in. I see the flexibility and the future utility of this card. So if you do have new Phyrexia bulk, it is time to go through your bulk and pull these out. These are now very hot items, and they are very very good. I mean, they might be good enough to see play in modern. I feel like it could be. But anyway, talking about EDHs, we'll move on to enchantments. This is a $6 card that has been going up and going up and going up. 
One of the things that I have always said is you look for unique cards. This is a unique card because it's also a tutor. It can tutor for an enchantment and put... So you can search Sacrifice It, search your library for enchantment card, and reveal that card, shuffle your library, and put it on top of it. But it also protects your enchantments, so that is doubly good. When you are talking about unique cards, you need to get them in foil because the multiplier is going to be good. The multiplier is three times, three and a half, which is fantastic on a card like this. And it's something that Invasion came in. I remember this card being like a quarter and 50 cents in Invasion. And we would never have expected there to be a, a whole entire set, an entire block dedicated enchantments. But there was. Enchantments only get better in time. The same principle holds with Snapcaster Mage. The reason Snapcaster Mage will always be good is there will always be instants and sorceries. And the more instants and sorceries, even if you consider some of them not good, as long as you have one or two really good ones being added on, it gets better in time. Talking about enchantments that have really got tin better in time, this is a card that was played in Nemesis. In Nemesis, it was played in the Rebel decks with Lin Sivi. I remember playing those decks and they were very good. You also had your Blinding Angel at the top. That's so funny, right? To think about Blinding Angel as the best card in, the, in your deck. But that was what people played. They played four copies of this. Four copies of Lin Sivi. Four copies of Blinding Angel. And you called it a deck. Foil multipliers for old cards are very good. If you can get, buy old foils and they seem somewhat playable, buy them, snap by them, because some of those old foils are going to have huge multipliers. I actually saw a foil copy of this in bulk probably two years ago, and I didn't buy it because I was buying, I don't know, I was buying the Hunt Masters of the Fells, and I don't know what I was doing, but... You can still find a lot of this stuff in bulk in trade binders because people just don't realize that old cards that have any EDH playability will eventually be $25. That is the tried and tested. It's just what it is. Like I cannot explain why, but people like to foil out their decks and even fringe playable cards and foil become extremely valuable. So, talking about the cards that have become valuable recently, Predict. I don't know if you guys know this, but I own a lot of Predicts. Um, because I own a lot of pretty much every card you can imagine. And Predict is now being played in Miracles. I should have owned foil copies of this. This is like one of the cards that I really regret not buying the foils because... It would be something I would buy foils in. It is just a few days ago, like a few weeks ago, it was a 25 cent card. Now it's $4.58, which is pretty good. But the foils are a ridiculous price because of a legacy or eternal play. People want foil copies of this. It's okay in miracles, but it's not something that is going to replace top, obviously. As a deck, I don't know if it has the long-term reach, but I do know I'm going to hold on to copies of this card because it's an old card. Odyssey is a set that does not have valuable cards in it, so therefore not much of it was opened. It was never considered a very strong set in terms of value. Uh, the cards were good, but they were just not... It wasn't like anyone's like, oh, hey, this card's going to be played forever. Predict is one of those cards that you, if you have Odyssey, you have it in bulk. All right, and let's talk about bulk. 50 cents becoming 250 and the foil. Meriden is a old set. It is now considered an old set. Therefore, the bulk of the Meriden is, has started to go up. 
everything in magic is a cycle. There is nothing that deviates from cycles. You have power level, so you have some sets like RTR that are really good. And then the next block, by definition, has to be very bad, like Pharaoh's block, which was very bad. We had a really good Kaladesh block, where it's multiple cards were banned, including Smuggler's Copter and the Guardian. Now we have a weak Amaket set block coming to us. It is what it is, and one of the things about the MTG Finance, when a set gets old enough, just random stuff starts going up in price because there's not much of it. It doesn't have to be amazing. It doesn't have to be fantastic. It just has to be old enough. And there has to be some slight demand for it. It can't be like the crappiest card ever, right? It can't be like a narwhal. But this is mass hysteria. Good card. 50 cents until recently. It looks like Fate Reforged. Then it started going up. And it has just consistently gone up. Because people have found that, hey, I want it for my EDH deck. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about these cards. Bye, guys.